Hi, everyone. This is Kersey Makanen. She is founder of Self System Wholeness Approach based in Finland. She also has an MBA and she is a vocational teacher uh, as well as an emerging world problem solver. Welcome, Kersey. Thank you so much, Suma. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your work with me and sending some of those links. Um, it's very intriguing. Uh, and I'm very interested in unpacking your work uh, in this conversation today. But before we begin, uh, I would love to know your hear about your own journey, your own awakening journey, and how it got you towards working on working in some of these topics. Yes. <clears throat> Thanks for asking. That's a that's a big question, of course, related to this as well. Um, um I think um I could start from my uh you know from my childhood and come back to this moment from there because it kind of builds up the transformation process also and kind of explains why I've entered into this world. So um um maybe I don't go into all the details but I I feel there are certain steps that relate to this relate to this journey what I've had so so uh if I go back to my um my um family environment and the time when I was growing up so you know this is basically a lot of my childhood time and before I was adult so um my background was not very spiritually supportive so I, I come from a very traditional patriarchal home and a kind of traditional values, mythical values were very much present there. And, and what I remember is that, um, for example, my mother tried to grow me up to be a very traditional woman. And for, for her, it wasn't so important that do I succeed in work life, but for her, it's most more about that I know how to do housework and how to take care of family and things like that. Um, my ma my father, uh, on the other hand, he was more interested in in career and and um, uh, working in his own company and and that kind of uh, showed me direction as well. So I guess there was a lot of typical male female traditional. Uh, split in in my family and I noticed that already as a quite young age and I, I remember it influenced on me and and how I saw my future as as a child that um, I wasn't so much adapting to my mother but I was more like looking my father who was seen as a successful person so I kind of took that side of of development for myself and on the other hand uh it kind of led to um what I also experienced home that I had to push all this uh, beautiful feminine side um background because it wasn't really appreciated and and more directed masculine mindset took over from, from my evolution as well. And of course, I, I adapted that as an only child in the family. And um, so I guess uh, that was a big part of what influenced. But in the same time, in the peer context, I experienced a lot of bullying. So uh, I, I was bullied at school for three years uh, as a teenager. And I think that also uh, kind of put together the uh, certain uh, shadow phenomena that started to become my interest as well. And um, um, so I, I very much felt like I was a fish in a wrong water and kind of noticing the shadow sides of life. While I I do know nowadays that there was the other side as well, and I've just recently last year gone through that when I was studying with Terry O'Fallon and her course, where we went through all these stages. So um, 
But for me, if I think of my spiritual journey and how I entered working with these things, it was more about observing this um, uh, kind of um, underneath phenomena below the surface. And it became my interest. And of course, I couldn't put it in words as a child like this, but you know, later on, I realized that it had an influence. Um, well, that was like one um, big time in my life all the way when I was 16 or 17. Um, and I guess after that, in, in, as a young young adult and you know, and late my my late teens, I um, I started to break out of these rules and norms and where I was growing growing with, and uh, kind of rebelled against this patriarchal mindsets and and wanted to liberate the feminine and. Uh, started to fight for these uh, rights that I had internally. And, and I guess it also led me to uh, find different kinds of professional backgrounds and plans, what my family preferred and, and wanted me to have. So, so I guess the part of the rebellion showed up there too, that I, I wanted to see a totally different, different work life. Um, then I, I would say that after that, I, I kind of calmed down because it was kind of a wild time in my life to, um, uh, trying to find myself, but that kind of calmed down as well. And I started to settle down and, and, and be more in, in stable in relationships and, and got married and, and uh, bought a house and lived so-called normal Western ideal life. And um, what, what I considered as a Western ideal model of how you're supposed to live and, and, and you know, um, uh, continue uh, your journey over a lifetime. Um, but, you know, um, I tried, <laughs> I tried to be the normal person. But you know, uh, I, I feel that I, I failed completely in this. That um, um, yes, of course, there was a, a, a period of time, uh, quite a long so, when I uh, lived according to these ideals. But all the time, I had this background um, voice uh, that was telling me that this is not who I am. This is not for me, this life. And, um, and, and I guess after that, it kind of took me to a place where my whole life was in a complete transformation. And it, it seemed like it was breaking apart completely. So if you think of that, I had like built a dream life, you know, with my husband and everything. And then that started to break down completely. So I had a uh, divorce, um, uh, loss of uh, jobs, several jobs. So there was unemployment. And due to these two reasons, I also decided to change town. And I came to live in Helsinki area where I am now also. Um, so there was an environment shift and totally new career started here and totally new direction of life. So. So it was like a complete, like a triple loop transformation in my life that nothing was the same anymore. And, and that started to take me to look at myself more deeply and, and, and transform me into this more spiritual way of uh, experiencing life. So I, I could say that maybe that time when I came to Helsinki and I received a, a kind of a spiritual collective calling um, it was a kind of an experience that that I, I I felt that I was called to work for the uh wounded world and and that kind of took place in me and I I, I started to follow that inquiry what it really meant and and um I, I I would say that that started to take me to study this um, different topics of um, 
personal development and um you know at at first i started with uh carl jung and uh um i think jung was my um first big so-called guru or a teacher even though he was only in books but um uh, he gave me a few guidelines which i still remember that they were like like cornerstones also on my journey and long-term inquiries that i had and you know um some of these were related to shadow i think the beginning was the shadow so i at this point i started to recognize the shadow side of me and and understand that it had a connection to my life history and I wanted to become more familiar with what really happened to me. I wanted to receive answers and, and understand that what's behind all that, those experiences, and why did I feel that I was um, unbelonging and an outsider in my own environment, my own life? Um, so, so the shadow and especially the projections um, were, were something which uh, kept on leading my way that I really wanted to understand that how do I really get into seeing projections because Jung saw projections and I wanted to see all that too. And, 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 and that was one inquiry that led me forward to look for the answer deeper and deeper within me also and at that point of course i didn't realize that they were these were developmental questions in a way and and uh kind of led my curiosity because of that um so um so maybe i could say that this um jung's guidance for me was like showing me the light, direction of light, and um, how to come from the shadows to light. And this is so um, uh, interesting because I don't know if you know Gene Key's profile, but um, you know, um, uh, regardless of all the developmental assessments and, and other typologies, I've noticed that uh, Gene Key's, which is more spiritual, um, profile it has explained a lot of uh, these patterns what I've experienced as a child and that also tells me that uh, my life's work is a warrior of light so basically um, that's what I completely felt that I've been doing all my life that finding my way back to the light from the shadows and that is not the easiest journey and um it's also related to my purpose, according to Ching Keys, which is valor, or did I pronounce that right? A valor. So, so, that, so, so basically it relates to the shadow again and is connected to being a warrior of light. And um, um, so, so, um, I, I resonated so much with my life experience when I started to learn all these patterns all around uh, different sources in me. And uh, it started to come together that, okay, why do I have to struggle? Because that's how I felt that my life was a struggle. And, you know, this kind of a experience of suffering or, or kind of a outsider in the world uh, outsider in your own life it 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 leaves you forward if you're really curious it takes you forward to resolve these these um um mysteries that are related to these experiences which you are completely unaware when you are growing through them but at some point you start realizing them when you go deeper in your own spiritual process and I, I could also say that the um, uh, this was a 
transformation uh, point in a way when I started to build a new work for myself also, because I realized that, uh, you know, I didn't really want to be in the business field because my background was very strongly in the business and businesses in this country is still very much operating in this modern mindset. And a modern mindset is, is very much not seeing who you really are as, an, as a person. Um, so that was also the time when I started to shift profession and, and um, build my entrepreneurship. And, and, you know, it's been very much in a freelance world because, you know, I was uh, all the time I was working uh, for permanent wor workplaces as well in the same time and, and still building my own freelance approach to to bring out my um, vision of how this new world looks like and how is the new self, which direction am I really going? And I started to study to become a teacher and I studied coaching and different kinds of tools and certifications and, and related to development also. And, um, um, you know, it's uh, very much related to kind of resolving a piece by piece of yourself all the time and then applying that into your work in the same time. So I felt that while I realized something in me, I applied that in the external context in my work so that I transformed the interior and exterior continuously all the time. So, so part of the projections coming in and the shadow work, how I, how I was um, bringing myself from shadows to light, it related to this, you know, I didn't even realize that I was doing this, but it's just one of the surprises that then this journey happens that, um, um, that you're, you're learning to do things correctly while you have no idea what you're doing if you just uh, surrender this unknowingness on this path and really listen to your soul's calling it's going to take you you know where where you're headed so I, I've kind of noticed that this breaching the interior of me and exterior what I uh, work with uh, together it becomes totally new perspective and perception and that's how self system wholeness and individual paradigmatic mandala was also born that I realized that I had projected my perceptions out and then I was taking it back in to realize it again and again inside so that my perception changes and that's how my my worldview is is widened again and then I apply that in my work so basically in teaching coaching all the relationships all the all the all life is possibility to learning and transformation and um and, and also in the videos, what I presented for you, I, I talk about the teacher-learner relationship, which is very much related to the self-other relationship that you have interior and exterior coming together all the time so that you consciously play with that dynamic so that you can bring more and more wholeness into your perception. It's it's kind of a healing, but, you know, it's... Um, it's also a surprising because you don't know where it takes you and you you don't know what you're going to learn. But but, you know, when you finally start seeing backwards, you you realize things which you could not ever have experienced or understood or uh, thought of before really going through that process. Um. So uh, I would say that around this time when I was building a new work for myself, there, I came to a point where I realized that now it looks like I'm really, 
I'm I'm starting to see what's the what is really the um, um, usefulness and benefit of this way of working with building myself and my framework and my my teachings in the same time, and I started to understand that these go together. And, and there can be something coming out which can benefit the world as well. And at that point, I, I realized that, okay, it's, it's time that I really concentrate on this and, and really see where it takes me. So it kind of, it was kind of a culmination point for stepping backwards from my professional and personal communities so that I can really focus on realizing where this is taking me. Because um, uh, the, the liberation of the self and the the um, experiences of suffering what I had for such a long time in my life, um, they were kind of calling me that this, this is the thing, notice this, follow this path. So, um, so um, it kind of took me to the point where, where I am now that I'm also uh, uh, connecting all this to um, dissolving all the possible uh, resistance which still there still is and and connecting my work to more larger wholeness love and interconnectedness so um so the um there there could be also i i could see it also that you know, my whole life journey is uh, about finding my own truth also and, and opening the mysteries of the truth in deeper and deeper way. And, you know, it's, it doesn't even stop to the individual side. It goes way beyond that to, to more to the absolute side of life and and uh, which is a, another big mystery itself how did this bring you to non-duality hmm. uh, because um usually in non-duality they would and there are different ideas and different ways to express non-duality um so there is this one idea uh thought about non-duality um the wholeness is already here mm -hmm. and um, so and there's usually resistance towards the personal development side mm -hmm. of aspect um of transformation uh, so mm -hmm. how did this come together for you because mm -hmm. your work uh, talks refers to a lot about the personal development aspect yes yes process. Yes, and um, uh, I, I suppose in my connection to this, you know, my personal practice was like growing up from basically from bottom up and uh, non-duality is like waking up and like from top down. And, and now I came to my, in my own development, I came to a place where these two start coming together. And this is what Terry O'Fallon also uh, presents in her theories that uh, states and stages interpenetrate. And, and that's exactly my experience that you don't necessarily need the top-down approach because you can get to non-duality or closer to non-duality from bottom up as well. And, and still it's a question of realization of these states and these states can be seen that they are they are you know different from uh developmental states because you know when you're growing up basically you can say that every state experience is anything you experience anything you go through but when talking about this waking up stage and I don't really I'm not professional in any of the traditions so this is just how I've come to these understandings so so for me the understanding of the waking up stage is that it's they are these certain particular kind of practices which you can uh, start 
uh, practicing and, and they go in a certain way and there are certain orders. Well, actually, I've recently um, studied, uh, for example, a little bit of Buddhism uh, so that I understand what kind of practices there are and how they present them. And I've realized that uh, many of those states are something what I've also realized already. So, so it comes very close to, it's, it's very much my reality that these come together, but no matter what is your approach. So you can do a top-down approach or a, a bottom-up approach, and you can still find your way. But I guess the difference is that um, if you only do one, you, you may not realize the other if you have no clue that uh, there are actually two approaches which are opposing to each other. And, and still very much uh, growing up is related to ego growing up, you know, becoming greater and greater. Um, so very Western approach. And then there is also this um, Eastern side of this, which is more like um, aiming on these higher states and, and kind of realizing your wholeness and, and non-duality first. But if you don't do anything to integrate your ordinary experiences and bringing those states into your reality in your life, they are, they are not going to take place in your whole beingness and in your everyday life and that may also uh, lead to unbalanced development so that uh, you may be a very good realizer but uh, you may not be able to handle your relationships in your everyday life and you have a lot of shadows or um, uh, you uh, some qualities like narcissism or something else shows up because you haven't integrated certain parts of yourself. So I, I feel that the both approaches are needed here. Um, and in the... Um, and my practice is basically created the way that it's evolutionary. So there is no stopping in that process because um, I, I want it to be possible for myself and the practitioners also that um, there, there is no ending. So that they learn that there is no ending. It's an, it's an endless spiral. And um, you can approach it from uh, uh, different directions, and 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 that's very um, um, you know beautiful journey when you, when you can do it that way and and really experience life from many different directions too in the same time. And, hmm. uh, can you speak a little bit about uh, your thoughts on? what role non-duality plays uh, in understanding how psyche works? Because I remember you mentioned a bit about it in your uh, in one of your videos. I'd, I'd love to, for you to expand a bit more. So what is non-duality for me? Is, is that- Yeah, it? also like what role does it play in, does it help in understanding the mm -hmm. psyche better? Well, I would say that, um, um, you know, one of these surprises, what I came across myself in, in the past four years was that I was playing with this yin and yang non-dual structure uh, all the time during my life and during my development, and I didn't know it. But that's what we all do here in, in, in our lives. So basically, all our experiences and realizations are like examples of these uh, underlying wholeness or non-duality. And um, if, if I could um, would give you some example, what is the non-dual in, in my practice, what I'm building right now for the practitioners, then I could say it's the non-dual universe is like uh, what, what I'm approaching. So that means that um, we are able to move towards the ego development, you know, end of ego develops. And so we could say that it's the end of evolution, egoic evolution, where, where that journey, what I'm building right now is, is uh, leading people. 
And, you know, I guess some spiritual traditions talk about it as Brahman, for example. Um, and there are probably other names, uh, um, but, you know, I, I guess Brahman is quite known uh, also in, in many traditions. So, so for me, this, for example, this non-dual uh, approach, it also means that you have a kind of a form and you have formless side in the practice. And this form is like, it's you, it's your personal uh, structure. So you are always realizing new uh, sides of yourself new parts of you and you know this formless participates to that continuously because how else would that be possible if we didn't have the form and the formless so what is it that we are really realizing if we don't have these both so it's like fusion for me all the way along and um it it shows up in 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 different ways in different levels and of course there is individual side to this as well did i answer to your question yes uh yeah i i know it's a difficult question because there are so many ways to uh, talk about it uh, and i'm i'm more interested in learning about um does it help in understand once that realization occurs of non-duality um does it help in understanding the psyche uh, of the person? Well, um, you know, Jung thought so that, um, and for him, yin and yang was also uh, representing that. Well, I, I, I know that Jung didn't fully apply to all that uh, understanding and there were disagreements also, and so do I. So I'm kind of contradicting Jung also in some steps. Um, but I would say that um, non-duality as a concept can also be very difficult to understand. So you kind of have to grow up also to certain levels so that you naturally start understanding what non-duality is. So for the practitioner, it may not be necessary to know that this is a non-dual practice. But since I happen to know that some people are meditators, and they are wanting to know that what is this practice all about and what are the backgrounds and things like that. So for them, it might be important information. But uh, from growing up perspective, I, I don't think it's necessary to know that this is a non-dual practice. Yeah, I think um, it, can, it can open up naturally when with the non-duality realization mm. when someone is not engaged in um right or wrong or good or bad uh, and kind of uh, scoped out of it then it's easy to see what's going on in the psyche what are the thoughts coming up um, it's yeah. more in like a witness mode uh, so without getting like super engaged in um, all the activity that's going on in the psyche I, I can see I can relate to that where um, non-duality can um, help uh, be more observer of all these all this content that's occurring in the psyche and that can be um, a very um, top view of looking at how some of the some of our our um, behavior <laughs> that occurs in the real world <laughs> well certainly yes and and i you know i also use this the way that we can say that there are either or experiences there are also both and experiences there are complementary experiences and unity experiences so that kinds of kind of shows up in in different levels as well and people's descriptions and uh, experiences and perspectives and kind of brings out their relationship to non-duality also in the same time. And I, I know in some of one of in one of your video you have talked a bit about um three polarities. I, I'm curious about um what are those three primary polarities because especially because when usually uh, there uh, in non-duality related talks there there's only two polarities that gets talked about mm -hmm. so i'd love to get your thoughts on mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, you probably mean this interior, exterior, and individual, collective, and inside and outside. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, because you know that is that is what is um, what I've learned uh, that is underlying development. So that if you want to uh, bring holistic development and and practice holistically, you need to pay attention that you uh, practice all these three. But in an individual express experience, again, for the practitioner, they may have no idea that there are these principles underneath because usually they are not observable very easily for people. So you really have to be able to witness these if you're, you know, you want to use them consciously. But for the practitioner, there are, you know, archetypes. Uh, and and there are other polarities arising in in their experience. So, for example, in my paradigmatic mandala process, we use I usually talk about two polarities, but it brings out basically all these basic three also because they are underneath the practice. But the experiential polarities can be like perception or awareness, which are much more familiar. To people but you know um my my teacher in in these underlying polarities is is terry o'fallon who is putting all these together and i know that many other developmental scientists are using them all too because they are well known that they uh, help people to transform so the individual and collective is like the first first one of them and that is you know underlying everything and I use that also in the way in the practice that um, there are primary polarities showing up in people's experiences like I mentioned perception awareness intentions and attention so these are very much following these primary polarities so that how how we are approaching whether we are experiencing that this is more like a individual process where I'm individually influencing on this process or transformation consciously or I have some kind of an intention or attention that I'm going that direction so that I'm able to guide my journey by going towards certain purpose or goals but there is still the collective side. And we can, on the other hand, we can say that this comes from our uh, patterns, what we have inherited. So we all have a certain structure already and, and certain patterns in our awareness. So that is more like collective heritage, what we have. And, and still when we are moving towards something new, we need to kind of reconstruct our existing structures in, this, in our body and mind so that we are able to realize these new states of being and take our evolution forward. So, so there is also the side of this that uh, there is new coming, but there is also old already existing. And we need to play this this um, polarity is there while our when journeying from one place to a new place. So we always need to bridge the body mind in the same time. Uh, and, and yeah, does, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I hope <laughs> I interrupt you. Yes, I I was just um, continuing with these two others. <laughs> Um, so the interior and exterior polarity, it, in my framework, it, it relates to the individual and collective also uh, very much. And it's about basically, what do you see is in you? What is inside of you? And what is outside of you completely? So that you don't, you kind of feel it's other to you. So there is something which is self and something which is other. And, you know, these are context shifts. So they happen once in a tier. So not very often. And, and that means that your whole worldview transforms into a new when that happens. And 
that's where the world actually is right now. We are doing a big context shift from the modern to postmodern world. And, and we already experienced the challenge and difficulty of that. And if I look at the in, inside and outside polarity, it relates to this previous, because now we are going to the individual paradigm, individual transformation process. So basically when you practice, you can real, realize that, okay, here I am right now. And I'm looking that words there. And that words is outside of me. So I'm practicing inside and outside together. And, you know, that's how we bring ourselves to the new stage of being, but also to new stages of being. And it depends on our developmental level, whether it's a context shift or something else, what is going on there. So basically it starts from a bigger and bigger individual collective. It comes to a little bit smaller interior and exterior. And then we have inside and outside where we do the individual practice in our own awareness. Yeah, I think you brought up some really insightful points. Um, no, uh, and non-duality realization can do that, where it it kind of collapses your individual perspective, but it doesn't talk about that shift that happens. Like mm -hmm. it takes time for that to kind of integrate with um, with the body and mind. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, and that's that's the benefit of the bottom up approach because. It seems like there may be more uh, less resistance to um, understand those things, whereas top to bottom approach sometimes there can be tendency to dismiss everything uh, and not uh, look at some of these changes that are happening, which which can take a long time to kind of settle in the body mind. Yes, yes, and and you know uh, stage realizations can happen fast, just like that. And, um, but, you know, state shifts, they are, you know, plus three years or so. And, you know, most people don't do very active transformation if they are not involved in anything like this or interested in that. So, you know, for example, my longest level time, what I was, uh, was at the um, 3.5 uh, modern orange <laughs> and and that was about 10 years so but that was also the time when I had no idea about anything related to development so um, uh, when you don't know anything about this you might not even know that there are levels like this and of course it takes a certain level before you start even becoming interested in anything like this but um, the wisdom traditions, they have thousands of years of history. Development history is maybe 100 years or so. And uh, so, of course, it's less known, but it's uh, just as uh, meaningful and important. Uh, can you uh, brief uh, some? I, I'm just realizing some people may, so, or some people, listeners in the audience, they may be new to this idea of states and stages uh, would you be able to explain um, a little bit for those who are new so you mean like the orange or stages yeah just briefly what are those different stages and what are the different states um, in, in the process well you know the i wouldn't start naming the states because uh, from um, a creative wholeness life practice perspective, every experience is a state. And, you know, those grow up into stages. And uh, for me, it's not really so important whether we know these stages, because all we need to know in everyday life anyway, that what is our ex my experience right now? And where, how do I make sense of this? So, so the practice is trying to help the people to make sense of their experience right in this moment. And it gives some structure and context to that. 
So that takes the process forward anyway, when we learn to do it. So it takes a practice. That's why it's a practice. So it's, it, it shifts over time in your experience. And you also learn to realize it different ways. But, you know, um, I, I follow Terry O'Fallon's scale on this, and she has 12 levels. And, um, um, you know, I usually don't teach the levels because uh, it's not important for the practice, but I, and the levels show up in the, in the uh, model and the practice itself. But, you know, I guess it's, we can say that, you know, if we, you know, don't take the whole day to explain the devil <laughs> levels here is that um, we have concrete, stages where we start when we are children first and second person perspective and uh, you know that is important so that there will be individual uh, so that the individual becomes socialized member of society so that is the most important thing that has to happen between first and the second person perspectives so that the socialization gets started and we also start developing uh, uh, thinking, early thinking capacities in the concrete tier in second person perspective, which leads us to the third person and the subtle tier where the thinking grows up. So I, I would like to say that that thinking is actually, and growing up cognitive capacity is the most important quality that has to happen in, in the uh, subtle tier and and that becomes awareness when we integrate that in fourth person perspective so we could uh, you know from uh, uh, from my uh, perspective we could say that there is either or in first person there is both an in fourth person there is complementary in fifth person and unity in sixth person so there is the same kind of a kind of a non-dual uh, transformation happening through these levels anyway. And um, so, and in metaware tier, in fifth person, you start deconstructing uh, the mind and calling deeper underneath that so that you can uh, bring more realizations from the outside mind to uh, be able to, you know, for example, heal and, and heal better when you you're can see a lot more than when being uh, inside the mind where you're very much still um, um, limited in that perception. And six person takes you to timelessness and totally uh, outside of time, which is outside of egoic uh, uh, perspective. That was kind of a <laughs> quick no, that was that was good. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and you have uh, shared a bit about um, archetypes. Uh, I, I, this may be a little bit off topic, but I, I would love to understand um, what role archetypes play in opening up to an, um, a more wholer perspective. Well. <clears throat> Well, I guess um, how I'm using archetypes, it's not necessarily according to any other model of archetypes. So Jung had 12 archetypes, but Jung's archetypes are something which, um, and which I'm not applying as such, because for me, the archetypes arise when you have an experience. And your experience talks about what is going on. So we can see that also in archetypal phenomena. And uh, I, I would say that one of these important ones here, what I use is the uh, intent. So, and I would connect that to spirit also. And that is underneath uh, our, you know, consciousness. So we, you know, start moving forward because we come to the world with these archetypes. And uh, that also takes a little child forward. So uh, there is continuous evolution of the little spirit in that way. So I could name that a spirit so that we can talk about that. Um, and um, 
And another important there is the perception, because that is also related to what is it that you're able to understand. So that what kind of uh, perceptions show up to you? What are you sensing? And senses start to grow already as a baby, and they grow into uh, bigger and bigger uh, perceptions and integrate, and that also how awareness grows. And um, so they are under the experiences. So I wouldn't necessarily start talking about particular well-known archetypes, but as experiential patterns. And we all are kind of subconscious, subconsciously affected by these archetypal patterns. Uh, in our collective psyche. Yeah, I would uh, would say that uh, it would be nice to know, nice to be able to deconstruct that whole whole psyche unconsciously, so that we could realize what kind of patterns there are. But you know, um, you know, further and further our evolution goes, it it opens this side of uh, that more and more. So. Uh, and again, from an ordinary practitioner perspective, all is it that is important is really the experience and the story that arises from that and how it feels in your body and where it feels in your body. So that kind of things which you can more easily recognize are, are essential in that sense. And, and it seems like even being aware, aware about uh, these archetypes can uh, really benefit in healing of a person. Um, where, whereas, uh, and that seems to be like the initial step to just even becoming aware because sometimes um, in top-down approach, sometimes those things can be completely dismissed. Um, so it's, it's very interesting like how convoluted um, this journey of awareness can be. <laughs> Yeah, and um, uh, I, I'm not sure how they teach it because, you know, I have no experience of that. I, I don't know how they teach those top-down approaches. But when I look at those uh, teachings how and the principles, what they have in those traditions, I notice that it goes very nicely together with some of these patterns that show up from growing up perspectives. And, and for example, many shadow re resolution practices are very similar in that sense and that brings uh, me again into what is the uh, basic principle in the in the in my practice is that uh, we bring this self and other subject and object together and play the role of the yin and yang so that we can kind of make sense of our reality continuously. And that means that if we are fully honest to ourselves, we realize the shadow experiences and work on those as well. And we also can reach outwards, which is more like contemplative approach and finding new states of experiencing. So, um, you know, I guess it's also a little bit about the question how honest and how deeply the person, the practitioner is able to work in, in this moment. And that is also awareness that grows up. So, so that's why the practice is. And it seems uh, like in your practice, the main approach is to kind of like uh, integrate self shadow and spirit uh, so um, is is that the kind of like um I, I i don't want to say that it's a final destination but it's that is that the um kind of the goal for transformation uh, of a person that that was a very very good um you know putting it together in a very simple way and that's how i usually like to present it so that way um, become consciously aware of the self system shadow and spirit and and the system part of this is actually the most difficult part because it's not actually uh, you know um, 
what the 4.5 or teal consciousness calls as a system that is just part of it but it's more like the process awareness what we can also call a system so that is basically the step where you're an object to the others at previous levels so basically you're you're kind of a showing a model kind of a role model for the previous level so it's just a beginning of that side um um and and the integration of cell system shadow and spirits it's basically integration of the whole mandala and kind of resol resolution of the mandala so we could also say that the mandala is kind of a transcend and include process continuously whether we are talking about in the moment or whether we are talking on longer period of time when we are integrating the states into stages. So that's why I feel that it's it's quite functional structure because um, we learn to be present in the moment. So we transform the presence and being in the moment and we become more and more presence and being. So, so it's a continuous transformation of uh, personal experience. And in the same time, we could say that when you learn to see yourself in different structures, different, different places in the same time, what the process is, the cell system, shadow and spirit, when you learn to perceive yourself through whole, whole mandala, you also recognize that you are actually a process. You're not just um, a particular identity or your identity isn't in only one place, but you're, you're a process. And, and that means that you're, you have parts of you in several levels or several different um, spaces. And uh, that also brings you fluency and flow in your your state of being in everyday life so that you're not very um, attached to any identities and you're flowing continuously when you learn to be present in the moment and transcend that continuously but you know that is the practice but that's why we have the practice again so that uh, we we learn to do it more fluently uh, is the does this practice and i'm asking because there are some practices which which are not sometimes some of some practices may not be aware about how they may end up trapping a person into a more rigid structure so does this practice take care of that where because there is always a risk about like um, giving some more concepts to a person, some more structure, yes. and they lock themselves into and get ad addicted to that structure. Yes, yes, and you know, um, the the way how I start with this that I usually give a program or at least uh, about a three four month course. They are, there are, you know, shorter courses and longer courses, how we start practicing this. And during that time, we also, um, we have question hours and, and, you know, pair work and a small group work where we can kind of dissolve these dysfunctionalities from our experience. And, but, but, you know, we are people. And we, we cannot always uh, be so perfect in, in our experience and in this moment when in our lives too. So I very much look at this as life. And, you know, it takes all influence of the others in the group. And, and of course, I help everyone individually as well. Um, but, you know, part of awareness growing it, that you learn to identify potential risks and and which are uh, dysfunctions for your uh, for your cell system we can also look at yourself as self organizing system so that uh, you learn to notice these dysfunctions in your experiences but you know there are still it's still possible that what what you know for example i have realized in my own experiences that um, it's possible that when you start practicing, at first you take um, forward those aspects of yourself which you are more comfortable with and more aware of. 
And when you have done all that, you start looking at the other sides because you dismiss them automatically if you are not fully playing with the shadows yet. But when you start integrating the shadows, which is more important part of this practice anyway, is, is that you start being able to see more and more of those potential so-called uh, uh, dysfunctions or risks or um, uh, limiting uh, factors which there can so out. So uh, I think it's important that there is influence uh, with the other people uh, in the practicing phase so that you learn more and more to dissolve these uh, patterns from your experience. Uh, and does it make a person aware about that they they already are whole and not um, they don't need a specific practice to um, go through certain states or stages because uh, that can kind of create mm, I'm not sure like if if it, that could create more confusion for people where they feel like they have to do go through all these states or stages to be um to be whole well you know um I guess that is also the question of uh where we can observe our own projections and shadows too in that kind of an experience so that um um what is it actually telling uh, what what is the story? What I'm telling to myself here, that because um, you know I've I met people who um, tell me that um, I'm always happy and content. I don't need to do this practice, and you know I'm not sure if these people have even started the spiritual journey yet. So so you know there there can also show up these stories which may not be so helpful. And even with people who have done this journey uh, for several years, we always have stories to deconstruct. So we can always get confused with that too. So, so I guess uh, that is a very good question. And I think that is also a question what a practitioner needs to ask themselves all the time, because that, that is building up your reality all the time. So we are not only the wholeness, we are also all the parts of it, so that we need to see all sides of this. And part of the self-system shadow and spirit is that we learn to look at this all, uh, all parts of ourselves that is where we start this practice you know it grows up when you go to later and more subtle levels but we start by recognizing this four in ourselves so that we really know who are these who am i here in the self who is the spirit in me and and so that i can really internalize who these are and when I start understanding that then I start understanding also that ah I have a bias here and I have a shadow there and this is what I need to work with and I've also realized that um, um, you uh, you learn to deconstruct and reconstruct uh, in the same time when you practice uh, more more everyday basis so that you 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 become what you meditate so i guess there is also the the responsibility for the practitioner uh also that what is it that you're setting forward because you know we can you know consciously decide what is our purpose there and go there but you know if we have chosen completely a wrong thing we are going to notice that at some point anyway and if we don't realize a shadow in that point when we are kind of seeing the future and choosing a direction if we don't realize what is actually hiding behind us um, you know, we end up in trouble anyway, but that is life. That's what happens in everyday life anyway in this kind of situation. So I think the easy part of the practice is that it gives you a context to everyday life situations so that you can start seeing that, aha, this is what I usually do in this kind of situations. And you can also change your habitual patterns in the same time and learn to witness them in the moment so that um, you're not so tempted to fall back to your old experiences and, and patterns. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think you explained it really well. Uh, it can happen that even the ideas like I'm already wholeness or uh, I don't need any practice can also be a story. So that's why it becomes very tricky um, if someone is pr a practitioner to, to uh, kind of point to that. <laughs> it's very, it's very tricky. Uh, yeah, and that's what the growing up is, you know, uh, dissolution of these stories. It's it's a developmental practice also. So it shows up on that path where you start actively doing that. So it's uh, these uh, all these phenomena usually show up at some point in our evolution. So, uh, and you know, at this point, I can already say that if you leave something undone, when you face that first time, you're going to have to face it the next time. And if you don't do it then, then you probably have a place in your coming levels again, later levels in your evolution, when you are facing the same problem again until you dissolve it. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I guess it's, it, it's a path of like... Um, being transparent with yourself, whether are some of these ideas, um, are they stories or is this really my experience? Um, you, one has to be transparent with them, uh, themselves to be able to um, dissolve and dissolve those. Uh, otherwise, even if you, Even if you are working with um, a good practitioner, it like it's it's a lot of like self responsibility to uh, for you to kind of dissolve some of those ideas. Yes, yes, it is, and and you know it it takes commitment, and and so so if you just like it takes commitment from a meditator in a, in a tradition that uh, it's it's the same here, that it's kind of a rigorous practice if you really commit to do it. And, but it also brings um, realizations which uh, might be revolutionary for your experience and, and life-changing. And I'm not saying that uh, experiences should be life-changing, you know. We can just practice for so many different reasons. And um, it's it's more about the question that uh, what is it? Why are you doing this? What well, and what is the the reason why you're doing this? Because you know, I think it's a question that everyone should ask before starting anything like this. That what is really motivating me in this process, and and am I able to really commit to that practice? And this next question I had for you, Kersi, this is more for from a collective perspective where um, I, I would love to get your thoughts on evolution. You you have talked a little bit about involution uh, and um, like that being playing an important role. Do you what are your thoughts on where the collective evolution is moving towards? Do you think that um, more and more people are going inwards uh, to evolve um, in in near future? Well, I'm not sure about the near future. Um, it's very hard to say. I mean, what is, what is this time scale anyway? Um, but, you know, big difference can happen in few seconds in, in good realizations. But, but in if talking about collective evolution like the mankind, for example, um, I, um, I am I'm not so uh, optimistic uh, about <laughs> what is going to happen in the near future um, because I also uh, look at this like the more and more people start realizing responsibilities within themselves where, where we have to start turning inwards. Um, the more and more that starts to happen, the more and more the collective transformation is also taking place. So I feel that there is the individual and collective sides in this process. So it has to be kind of a both ways. And 
But on the other hand, the individual transformation may not happen if the societal and environmental factors are not in the place. For example, while Finland is a very, you know, advanced country and, you know, modern society, we are still not further than United States, for example, and, and when talking about, you know, where the maturity is. Uh, so uh, it, the transformation needs also to start for all the levels in, in society. Uh, so, so I would like to see that there would be more systemic change in, in uh, our administrative and governing systems, but also education systems, uh, work life and leadership. So, so that the individual can actually start transforming because, you know, collective is giving, um, you know, the underlying structures to where that starts. And um, if, if we want to get that opportunity growing, we're going to have to do it in, in all the levels of society, individual and collective as well. Um, and... Um, I think it's even more complex when talking about the global perspective because um, we are also stuck with these underlying uh, shadows. And, and again, we come to the projections, for example, that, you know, I, I feel that um, um, many societies have uh, so many differences with each other that it's really hard to see how they come together if they don't start seeing the other side of the party, the other uh, party as part of them, so that they could really start integrating their own projections and, and potential shadows related to their own perceptions. So I feel that there is a a uh, really big transformation needed. And um, I, I feel that, um, you know, um, whole mankind could be uh, capable of destroying itself already with the skills and capacities what uh, we have here already with the intellect, for example. Um, we, we would be capable of destroying whole evolution of the mankind. And uh, if we don't realize our uh, own responsibility in these experiences. Yeah, it's, uh, it has to show up at an individual level uh, first to, for it to show up at a collective level. Yeah, I feel that um, I think there are several smart people uh, during the history who I I cannot name a single one, but I'm pretty sure that um, there are people who have realized that, okay, I have an idea. How about if we two unite our forces and do something together? So it could start from something so small as this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it, there can be like small in a group of people can, there is a potential for uh, them to bring um, big changes. It's not, it doesn't have to be like a huge, uh, huge groups of people. Yeah, and uh, you know, it. I, I feel that it grows, that, you know, uh, when you get started with something, it can, you know, there are ripple effects, how it, it can start changing. But, you know, I, I, I still think it's, it takes a lot of, uh, uniting forces of, of the existing healers and, and peoples on, on earth to uh, create a really big transformations which are needed. To encapsulate our conversation, uh, Kersi, and I've heard about this idea um, in from many different thought schools where the idea of um, an individual becoming, um, sorry, uh, the consciousness um, separating into individual egos uh, and the individual exploring the, um, the materialism as far as they can. And then at, at a certain point, there is kind of like a reverse where the, the individual ego starts integrating back into the consciousness uh, mm -hmm. and going back into consciousness. Uh, do, do, does that path of um, going 
breaking separating into individual ego and then going back to consciousness is that something uh, that resonates with you and um does um, is that something your system talks about at a collective level well um you know i i resonate with that in the sense that um before we can actually start growing back towards the um underlying consciousness and the wholeness we have to first be born as little egos as little selves and then grow up that self then integrate that self and then we can transcend the self so in that sense i feel that the uh, journey is going uh, that way and but it's also an individual question that where is your limitation and where you naturally stop there? Because, you know, as we know, everybody don't go to the end <laughs> if there is an end. Yeah, I think that kind of like um, it's, although it's it's at a conceptual level, it's very valuable to be aware uh, about those um nuances uh, in your own personal journey otherwise it can feel like you're uh, it's all happen what's happening is all vague and you're kind of lost yeah and you know uh, I think um, many people uh, like me who felt lost in a way as a child I think that is um, one aspect that takes people to the spiritual journey in later in life so, so I think the spiritual seekers are, uh, based on my experience, what I've met people is that they often have had this kind of experiences, uh, whether uh, as children or in, in some adult uh, life, so that they felt lost and, and loss of meaning or something, and, and it pushed them to look for the new direction. And uh, um, it depends on, you know, we can tell a story in many ways about this as well. So um, I, I guess many people from different backgrounds can come up uh, with that kind of an experience. Thank you for sharing this today. I, I, I think this was a very wonderful conversation. And I, I understand like these topics are very nuanced and uh, it's very difficult to talk about uh, these topics so I appreciate you um, being willing to do this uh, I, I is there anything you would like to uh, share about um, your approach um, today before we wrap up I hope you had a chance to explain uh, I, I know it goes a lot more in detail um, but if there is anything you would like to share more well, um, I think this was, um, you know, um, quite a quite a good beginning for. But I hope that the listeners uh, also take it as as a beginning, and and for me, it's like an emergent process continuously. And uh, I've just recently, last year, started to bring this to global context, and and kind of bringing out a new, uh, bigger version of this as well, so that I can really bridge the wholeness. And um, so it's an emergent process for me as well. So um, you know, uh, if if you uh, want to learn more, you can always learn more, just like I'm doing here continuously. So I don't see that there is a challenge in that, but of course, it's a big challenge as as a whole, the whole topic. So so in the uh, uh, I think the starting point for that could be uh, starting from my YouTube channel, which is uh, Self System Wholeness, and and uh, I have a website selfsystemwholeness.com, which is also bringing out this, and and my courses are showing up there too when I get them ready. And, and if you ever want to do a deeper dive uh, um, and pick a specific topic, do let me know. We can. Uh, I I know today's was more like an introduction, um, but we if you feel drawn to do a deeper dive, we can do that. Yes, uh, that that would be lovely, and I think uh, many other people could uh, also benefit from that. Thank you, and I'm going to post your information in the description um, of this video. Yeah, thanks thank for you. your time. Thank thank you, and thanks to the, the audience and listeners.